Good morning. I will be the moderator for this class. Today is Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024. Class, you have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. This school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, Zambia, with students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and gods many. But we now know that each lord must have a name, and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike lord and god, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator, Yahweh, chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh. I'm sorry, could somebody mute? Thank you. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no... Okay. I'm sorry. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. 
In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The ten primary aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demon, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, <coughs> excuse me. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This morning, we will begin with our prayer by Sister Fredria Lakes. We will have a song by Dr. Lenore Allen. Our scripture lesson is Joel, the second chapter to be read by Dr. Dennis Pratt. And our readers today are Drs. Jackie McCain and Deborah Van Hook. We will also be reading a transcript, the last lecture, of Dr. Kinley and importance of coming to school and being obedient, 
December 21st, 1975. May we start with our prayer, please, Dr. Virginia? Yes. Um, may we bow our hearts and minds in reverence to Yahweh. Yahweh, thank you for another day and another opportunity to gather together and be amongst the brethren to get another piece of this meal. Father, you know what we need. I pray for focus to hone in on the on the Zoom instead of the worldly distractions and things that may be bothering us. Yahweh, you are magnificent and I glorify you. Thank you for giving me what I need each and every day. And I pray that for the, the brethren as well. I give praise and give thanks and ask these things to your sons, Yahshua's Messiah's name. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning. This morning I want to sing a song. It's called The Wedding Banquet. I cannot come, I cannot come to the banquet. Don't trouble me now. I have married a wife. I have bought me a cow. I have fields and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold me, excuse, I cannot come. A certain man held a feast on his fine estate in town. He laid a festive table. He wore a wedding gown. He sent invitations to the neighbors far and wide. But when the meal was ready, each one of them replied, I cannot come. I cannot come to the banquet. Don't trouble me now. I have married a wife, but she eats like a cow. I have fields and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray holds me excuse. I cannot come. The master rose up in anger, called his servants by name, said, go out into the town and fetch the blind and the lame, fetch the peasants and the paupers, for this I have willed. My banquets must be crowded and my table must be filled. But you know what they say. I cannot come, I cannot come to the banquet. Don't trouble me now, I have married a wife. But she walks like a cow. I have fears and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold me, excuse, I cannot come. Now when the poor had assembled, there was still room to spare. So the master demanded, go search everywhere to the highways and the byways and invite them to come in. My table must be crowded so the banquet can begin. I cannot come, I cannot come to the banquet. Don't trouble me now. I have married a wife, yet she looks like a cow. I have fails and commitments that cost a pretty sum. Pray hold me, excuse, I cannot come. My L has written a lesson for the rest of mankind. If they're slow in responding, he may leave you behind. He has prepared a banquet for this great and glorious day. As Yahshua beckons, be certain that you say, I sure will come. I sure will come to the banquet. Be glad to come in. Thank Yahshua for saving me from a world full of sin. I will leave my commitments and never count the sum. Thanks for the invitation, I will come, I sure will come, I sure will come to the banquet, be glad to come in. Thank Yahshua for saving me from a world full of sin, I will leave my commitment and never count the sum. Thanks for the invitation, I will come, I sure will come. Hallelujah. Yay. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Dr. Pratt. Good day, family. I'll be reading from the King James format from, well, I'll be reading from the app. Okay, the Honest um, Holy Name Bible, Joel's second chapter. 
Lo ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the light. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth the land as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they, they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be in anguish. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one press another, they shall walk every one in his path. And though they march between weapons, they will not change their course. They shall run to and fro in the city, they shall run upon the wall, they shall climb upon the houses, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake, before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? Therefore also now saith Yahweh, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your heart, and not your garments. And turn unto Yahweh your Elohim, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and it grieveth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return, and relent, and leave a blessing behind him? that ye may offer a meal offering and a drink offering unto Yahweh your Elohim. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests the ministers of Yahweh weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Yahweh, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their Elohim? Then will Yahweh be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, Yahweh will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied herewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for Yahweh will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in Yahweh your Elohim, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you 
the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am Yahweh your Elohim, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of Yahweh come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as Yahweh hath said, and in the remnant whom Yahweh shall call. That was Joel chapter 2. Hallelujah. Let's all say hallelujah. 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 We, we thank everyone for their participation. I will now turn... This class over to our house, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning. Today we're reading um, the last lecture, and then next we'll be um, reading the previous lecture to that. Um, and I just wanted to, I was looking at the different times that Yahweh talks about that he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. I found this in Joel, which is in the prophets, and it says, it shall come to pass. This is Joel 2 and 26. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, Jew and Gentile, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And I was just look, thinking about that, um, um, the, the couple, I can't think of their name, that they both went out and they were speaking to Apollos and making them speak more truthfully about- Priscilla the and Aquila. Thank you for Priscilla and Aquila, that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy because they say, let the woman be silent in the church. And what is meant by the woman is that if you do not know and you are in a learning stage, then it's time for you to be quiet and to listen. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old man shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. So he's going to be pouring out his spirit to the Jew and to the Gentile. So, um, does anybody have anything else to say about Joel, the second chapter, anything that got them? And then we can read um, the transcript. I would like to know about the former rings and the latter rings, if anybody can expound on that. Okay, where is that? Okay, because it says, Where is that? I think you just passed it. Twenty five, was it? No, let's see. Yeah, I know where he was talking about in in the the beginning of the year. Okay, be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in Yahweh, your your Elohim. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. When I saw the word moderately, I said, well, it's not going to be like that time that they had with um, the flood. 
I did read about it. I found it in my Bible dictionaries about the different times of rain and everything, but I'm sorry, I don't remember. Does anybody have any information about that? I did remember reading that when Israel was obedient, that there would be a time that they would not suffer at all. And so that the crops would be enough, they would be, have enough rain and, a, and enough bountifulness that they would never run short. But I would, I would love to know more. I don't really know anything more about it. But I find things like that because we don't know anything about agriculture in the Middle East. I, I read my Bible uh, dictionary to find out what's a former rain, what's a latter rain, what grows where and when. So I, I got to say, I don't know if anybody else knows. Don't be shy. Okay. Hey, like I keep researching until I find somebody that can tell me. Well, I'm, I, I read it and I saw what you're talking about, the agriculture, but I didn't understand. I thought the former rains and latter rains meant something else, but you know, I don't, I remember hearing it a long time ago, but I can't remember what was said. I'm sorry, I cannot help you. Okay. Uh, what are we looking at here? Asking Let me get this. Okay. So you don't want to do the December the 3rd first? Well, I got this up, so let's do it. <laughs> of course. Is anybody reading? Uh, yes. Last lecture and importance, coming to school and being obedient. Lecture given by Dr. Kenley at 7 p.m. on Sunday, December 21st, 1975 in Los Angeles, California. Also called, Why Be Constant? and regular in your attendance in school. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. The following two sentences were missing from the beginning of our tape, but include in the original transcript. <clears throat> they were probably lost during tape duplication. Thank you ever so much. As usual, I am glad to be here before you. I would not have been here tonight had it not been important. I didn't sleep last night to amount to anything at all. And those of you that sat <clears throat> close and round about me this morning, you seen that I went to sleep in school sitting right in that chair. Now I wanna tell you the reason why I didn't sleep. The reason why I didn't sleep was because there's a message that's supposed to be conveyed into you that you probably might overlook or misunderstand or take it like you do some other things, which is vitally important. I'm aware of the fact that these things are done, not purposely, but because it's just simply that way. I'm going to tell you in the offset in a way that you can understand about both of the things that I want to say to you. And I want you to bear in mind, keep it in mind. Then I want you to be obedient to the things that I'm going to say to you. Don't just take it lightly and go ahead on because it might not be so well with you. One of the things I wanna say to you is this, be constant and regular in your attendance in school. Try to learn all that you can possibly learn. Try to understand all that you can possibly understand because you need it. You need it to keep you steadfast, strong, and not be removed from the faith. The scriptures say, <clears throat> now I want you to read the third chapter 
I believe, of Timothy, either the first Timothy or second. Second, that's going to happen in, in the last days. Now, that's one of the, the third chapter. Now, that's, excuse me. Now, that's one of the things I want you to bear in mind. It don't make no difference how you feel. If it's possible for you to come, come here, 1040. I want you to bear that in mind. I want you to obey it. If it wasn't important, I wouldn't be standing up here before you now. I'd like to say this to you, no, to you too. It is questionable whether or not that I was going to get to come to school tonight because every night they take my temperature. My temperature was so high tonight and one. Then Mary gave me some Tylenol. Then I took another pill that Dr. Harris prescribed for me. And if it's possible, I said, I'm going to go. So here I am. I'm very weak. I don't expect to stand here before you long. And I wouldn't, <clears throat> I wouldn't even be up here at all if it wasn't important that I want you to take heed. Now I'm already, now I've already told you about one thing that's come to school, be punctual. Do all that you can, excuse me, do all that you can toward getting someone else to come, somebody that don't know your family, those members of your family that don't know. Try to get them to come. Be patient with them. Be very careful with them and try to persuade them to come. Now, now the reason for that is because now I don't know whether you paid attention to it not or not. You can check. You can make your own statement. You don't have to answer to me about it at all. I told you that the Roman Catholics, Hobus Witnesses, and the Church of God, all of them were looking at Yahshua to jump down out of the, excuse me, looking for Christ to jump down out of the sky, 1975. I told you that that would not happen. Now, somebody would say, well, now, he don't know what he's talking about. He don't understand what he's talking about. He's talking about something he believes, something he thinks. Well, that part of it hasn't happened. You know that. You don't have to question that. Believe it or not. You don't have to be. You don't have to be bothered with that. You know now sitting on your seat that it hasn't happened as of yet. And this year is just about gone. Now this time of year, we have usually what you call a Christmas program. And that's where the scriptures was read <clears throat> as it was tonight to call your attention to the birth and the life of Yahshua the Messiah. For now, we're gone, <clears throat> for now we're too far gone for that tonight because we've been reading that for a long, long time and they've got <clears throat> that all messed up too. They don't know how to determine the birth of Yahshua the Messiah. And then another thing I want to remind you about I want to tell you about, I told you in 1961 that after we put this book out, they would be coming around to the place where they would begin to go back to the original Hebrew name of the father. That's 
English appear <clears throat> on the board. But they would go back to it. Now, I've got a lot of books around my house being recently copyrighted with the name Yahweh in it. New books and our works, our, excuse me, and our work has been circulated all over the world. And this has come to the attention of many of the famous television preachers, the name of our Heavenly Father. Now, I want to tell you what's happened, happened to them. Now, because they went on, I'm talking about Billy Graham, Rex Hubbard, Catherine Cullum, um, man down here in India, Oral Roberts, and many of them. Now, they were very, very careful, very careful not to use none of them names even though they have been printed in the book and so forth and so on. Even Jehovah's Witnesses, I told you that they would be coming up with this name. They never come up with it before until they re re received our work. And so now then they know Yahweh is correct and still they're too stubborn. And they say, it's Jehovah. And yet and still, right in the same book, they say they know there is no J in the Hebrew language. There isn't until yet, but it's Jehovah. It's the best English pronunciation of the name of our Heavenly Father. Nah, that's the best English. That's English up there on the board, not Jehovah. That's English up there. That's not Hebrew. You understand this one? Now, what I'm trying to tell you is this, how man in these days, these last days, you passed it too quickly, these last days, they know and all of this information has gone out in all the world. They are reluctant to say anything about it because they built up a great following and their reputation Reputate, rep, reputable ministers and they think that they're going to continue on that way and Yahweh will have to put up with it now what they uh, now what that's really me, excuse me now what that really means that means that they're opposed to you now the scriptures or the Bible says that they would be like that. Not only that, not only that, I want you to recognize this too. The Apostle Paul said, even among your own selves, some of them would rise up and speak perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. Did you know that? That that was in the book. If you didn't, I'll have it read because everybody, you have to really, excuse me, you have to really open up your eyes if you want to be saved and you don't have no time to be saved. Now, I told you about one excuse thing. Excuse me, I'm sorry. He said, and you don't have no long time to be saved. Excuse me, and you don't have no long time to be saved. Thank you. Now, I told you about one thing in particular. Now I want to tell you about another. One of the two things that I want to talk to you about. The second thing that I want to talk to you about is this, that you have come down to the place in history and in the time where you must be in attendance. It's urgent. It's important for you to be in attendance regular attendance and listen to the gospel as it is being taught. And then when you do that with a sincere heart, then Yahweh will give you some wisdom and knowledge and understanding. But until such time, there won't be anything new. 
Now, that's the second thing I want to tell you about, that you're right down to the end. Now, where everything you can read about in the Bible is taking place. Now, <clears throat> it's necessary now for me to, re to repeat. I don't like repetition too well, hmm. only in a sense. Now, here's the repetition that I'm going to repeat it. Do you recall that the Roman Catholics that I told you since I've been standing on this floor, I want you to be mindful of it. There's 550 million of them in the 1961. Now they're looking for the coming of Christ in 1975 with them this year, the year of Jubilee. Every 25 years, now that's wrong. It, it should be 50. But now they were looking at Christ to come in 1975. Jehovah's Witnesses looking for Christ to come in 1975. The Church of God looking for Christ to come in 1975. Now to, re to repeat something else that I've already stated to you, I want you to take it home. Think it over. I told you that Billy Graham and the rest of them don't use those names in their service. They're all out there, every which way. Now I'll call this the second thing I want to tell you about. I've touched on it, some of it. The second thing I want to tell you is this, and then I'll go on. I haven't forgotten that. And that is this. Now, don't forget now, I told you the other fellow. They believed <clears throat> he was coming in 1975. Don't forget that. And I told you that no, that won't happen like that in 1975. Now, the second thing I want to speak to you about is about the peace mission that Dr. Trainum <clears throat> told you about this morning. Now, I'm fully conscious and aware. Some will say this. Well, they have already been over there twice. Why do they want to go back again? Four. I don't see no sense in it. Now, I know people will say that. And I don't mean the world out yonder somewhere. That's not what I mean. I'm talking about in the school. Now, here's why I brought it up. And that is that is why I don't sleep. I, couldn't. I didn't sleep last night. I couldn't sleep last night. Slept off and on all night long and sat here, as I told you, in school this morning and went to sleep. Now, this 24th chapter of Matthew is just as important as anything else in the Bible. Now, if you're not, if you're not going to believe that, then you might as well throw away the whole business. All it has been said <clears throat> repeatedly, I'll let it, I'll let you be the judge. Listen carefully to what I'm saying. Listen carefully. I have told you repeatedly for 44 years that I was the man that Yahweh sent in the world in these last days to teach you the truth. I'm the man, the only man. Now, I know somebody will say, now, I don't believe that. And that sounds like a lie. Well, I got some news for you. Now, here's the news I have for you. I wouldn't believe it myself if Yahweh hadn't shown it to me. Yeah, I wouldn't believe it. But now this peace mission is necessary. Now they have told you, we have told you many times about how the high priest went in and out the sanctuary on the Day of Atonement. And he went in there three times in the most holy place on that day. This is the third peace mission. 
now from 1961 down until the present time. These true names have been circulated. They've gone all, they've gone over all the world. You can go in bookstores now and just almost pick up almost any book and you will find these names in them. Back there in, in 61, it wasn't like that. All of the preaching that you hear on the TV and the radio, I mean the television, none of them won't say anything about these names. I want, excuse me, I want to tell you something else about that name too. Over in Jerusalem or over in the Holy Land, they know that it's Yahweh. You won't find none, excuse me, you won't find not one rabbi on earth. You can't go. You can go right here in Los Angeles, right there on Wilshire Boulevard, and ask them about these names. And they'll all tell you that. That's right. They have never been out of the Masoretic text. The King James <clears throat> put them in there, Lord, God, and Jesus Christ. They have never been out of the Masoretic text or the Bible. And in some King James Bible versions, versions of the Bible, you'll find those names in the footnotes in your King James version of the Bible. Now, since we have come Excuse me, since we have now come to school, try to learn all you can. Give until it hurts toward the peace mission. Now, if you believe, now listen to what I'm saying. If you believe any parts of the Bible and you think it's true, you will do what you can to help this peace mission this gospel to be spread in all the world. Now, since you pay attention now, since you are the, not only, excuse, since you are the only ones that know anything at all, it's in reality about the truth, then it is imposed or incumbent upon you to see it. You're the, you're the very folks that he's talking about in the 24th chapter of Matthew. You're the folks that it was talking about to carry this message in all the world. Now listen, you know as well as I do, you have religious confusion all over the world. You know that you have ecclesiastical confusion or religious confusion. You know you don't have, you, you know you have it all over the world. You know that you have political confusion all over the world. They don't know what, do, what to do about political associates. You have economical situations and conditions all over the world. They don't know that. Jackie, would you take over? They don't know what to do about any of it. Ford don't know. Congress don't know. And the UN don't know. They just don't know. Now, what is happening is this. You've gotten down to the place where you have got to be diligent in your search, you see, in order to learn anything. The Apostle Paul says this. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Now for me to stand up here and say something to you and then can't prove it, see, that's bad, you follow? Now you don't have no long time to get straightened out. Some of us been in this school for a long time, haven't gotten straightened out yet. So don't you feel too bad about it, see? Apostle Paul says again in Hebrews that you should pay the most earnest heed to the things that you hear. See, Freddie, go ahead and read it. 
uh, chapter of Hebrews, second chapter of Hebrews. I haven't forgotten you out to pay the most earnest heed to the, now he was talking to the Jews. He wasn't talking to the Gentiles, see, to the things that you hear. Why so? Least at any time you let them slip, see. Now, some of the things that have been told you about this work, you let them slip. Therefore, it's necessary for you to come back to school, catch it up, see. Then when that happens, this is the next thing that happens. A root of bitterness springing up here among you, whereby many be devoured. Read that, would you please? Therefore, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Now, you're not going to get away with that, see? Now, you get that learned. You needn't think uh, to bring you back now so you can see what I'm talking about. These preachers, because they know that's the true name and they haven't been using them, see, and now they found out about them and now they're very careful about not using them. Now that don't mean they don't, excuse me, now that don't mean that they've gotten away with not using them. Now that don't mean that they've gotten away with something. Just don't mean it, you follow? All right, how shall, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first place, excuse me, which at first began to be spoken by Yahweh? Did you finish where you were reading? Yes. We ought to pay strict attention to the things that you hear, least at any time we let them slip and then come a root of bitterness. That's in there too, up above there. Now a root of bitterness see, springing up. Now somebody will come along after coming to this school see, I'm going to call your attention to it uh, after hearing these charts explained primarily raised in this school, been around here a long, long time, come up out of the clear blue sky, say things against that which you have been taught. Now see, if you hadn't learned your lesson, you will be carried away with it. Well, I'm going to tell you this. You're not going to get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. Now that brings me to say one other thing before we let up Dr. Harris, and that's this. Now it was said that you have to get away from blood, water, and spirit. Come up, come off it, blood, water, and spirit. Now I just want to show you how little the person understand about that made that remark that you're going to have to get up off of. In other words, they meant that you're going to have to go on further than that, see, than blood, water, and spirit. First, let's see what's the spirit. The third chapter of 2 Corinthians, I believe, and the 17th verse. Now Yahweh is spirit. Now you are going to get up off of that? Do you see that now? They say, that's what you're going to do. But Yahweh is spirit. Is that right? All right, what else? And where the spirit of Yahweh is. And where the spirit of Yahweh is. There is liberty. There is freedom. There is liberty, you see. You're going to have to get up off of blood, water, spirit. You follow? Now, you see, you see what you're getting off of? Can you see how stupid the statement was? See, now I've read it. I read it out of the book, right? Yahweh, not a spirit, but is spirit. Is that right? 
that means that he's the source. He's substance. He's the essence. He's the limits. He's the bounds of everything, conceivable and inconceivable, every known and unknown object and thing in the universe. See that now? Now, people would say things like that for self-gratification or try to teach you deep, carry you on down into the depth of things. That's what they call themselves doing, not realizing that what you're doing, you're making a mess out of it, see? Now, the thing to do in these schools is this, see, to make things as simple as possible, you see? Now, I used to, Dr. Gross can tell you, if you didn't have an education, although I never went to no further in school than the sixth grade of the elementary school, if you were not educated, and I mean really educated too, see, you wouldn't know anything at all about it. I was talking about that. That's right. Everything I said was scientific, highly academic, see? And they used to say to me, Dr. Gross and Dr. Harris and others, when this school was in, the, in its inception, they would say this, say, you just open the door a little bit so we can get our foot in. Now, what they meant was that I used words that they didn't understand. They had dictionaries, unabridged dictionaries. They would go to the dictionary. They would go to the dictionary. So they asked me to use. They didn't want their school, the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, to be second to none. Now, they really wanted a real education, see? So when I use those words and all, they say, well, Doc, I tell you what I want you, Brother Fred Allen Sr. was one of them, say, well, I want you to write something. We don't have no writings. We have nothing but the Bible. I said, okay, I write. So I wrote. Listen now, these things that I'm telling you about are important. You may not think so, but they are. About 26 pages. And I explained these charts. And I brought it back to school, stood up before the class and read it. They began to look around at one another. Brother Bass was a very outspoken man. He said, Doc, we don't understand what you're talking about. Dr. Allen, you remember asking me, am I telling the truth about it, Dr. Allen? That's said, right. Uh, they asked me to take this manuscript back and break it down. I did. I had about 50 pages then, and I brought it back, and I read it in school. They said, no, I'm sorry. I don't understand what you're talking about. And they asked me to take it back and break it down some more. And I told them that I work for a living and the insurance company was going to put me on the road. I wouldn't have time to do it. So then Dr. Gross took it over or somebody in the school to the Wittenberg University. That's a Lutheran university. The dean over there, he took a he took a shot at the first page and he didn't get out of the first paragraph before he closed it up. And he told Dr. Gross that he was real sorry about it, but he just didn't have the time to do it, to break it down. Somewhere in the conversation, Dr. Gross told him this, that I was a sixth grade scholar. And then he told Dr. Gross, he asked him if I was living. If I was living, is he around? Said, he's in Ohio. He's due here on the 18th. He says, well, the reason why I ask you is I want to come down and meet him. I want to meet that sixth grade elementary school scholar that's got all these highly academic words and scientific words. I want to see that fella. 
Well, when he came down, Dr. Gross told me, he said, well, he wanted to come down here. He wanted to see you on account of the manuscript. Then that took me to Ohio. So then that afternoon, now you talk about speaking, give him the same words that were in the manuscript. He said, yes, that's, that's him. See what the man's probably thought. I don't, what the man probably, see what the man probably thought. I didn't say he did think this. What he probably thought was a group of us had gotten together and wrote it, see, for the school. Yeah, for the school. He said, yes, that's him. Said he sure is a highly educated man. Got a real good education. Well, that same afternoon I spoke, I told them that there was going to be a war in Korea and the United States would be involved. And some of the members of the press was there. One, well, one was some relation to, indirectly relation to Dr. Gross was there. I believe his name is, well, he didn't have anything to say about it. But now this is what they said, said, yes, that man is educated and he's smart, but we don't think he knows what he's talking about. Wow. <laughs> when he says there is going to be a war in Korea within the next 60 days. The reason why I said 60 days was I went to Springfield one month. The next month I was in Cincinnati. And so I said 60 days and I would be back here within 60 days. And when I get back here, they would be fighting. The press said that that couldn't be so. The United States is not in a financial position to extend the war or go into new borders. <clears throat> they are not in a position. So when the 60 days were up, I came back to Springfield. The press was there. Now, if my memory serves me right, my brother, Bob, tried to tell you about that while he was here. So they took me down to the Springfield Daily News press seat. They sat me down and they just gathered around me, ring around me, my brother. And they asked me a lot of questions. They asked me, how did how did I know that there was going to be a war in Korea? How was I able to determine that with the scriptures? I said, it was a long drawn out story, but I've got a question. I want to ask you, how did you know that there wasn't going to be one? Well, <laughs> the, re well the reason why they wanted that is they wanted to put a write-up in the paper. So the write-up in the paper was just about three or four lines. Biblical orator claims to possess knowledge of how to forecast wars. That's all they said. Now, the reason why I brought all this up is because, you see, you have been with me some for many, many, many years and been with me for many, many years. You've seen a lot of things happen just like that that I have told you about, see, through the years. Now listen closely at what I'm telling you. As Dr. Trainum said, well said this morning, that he saw, see, now they're asleep. They're pretty wise, they are. You just continue to come, study, and then accept what you read. Don't try to fix it, don't try to fix it. Just leave it alone. Now there is mistranslations and misinterpolations in your Bible. We fix them, see. Now, are you following me closely in what I'm saying to you? Now that was a war that was in Korea. I asked you the question, was there a war in Korea? Yes. Or, yes. You, you didn't know me at that time. 
Now, in the Second World War, before that time, on the thir on a Thursday night, I told them we didn't have but one chart. That's this one right here. This is the only one we had. The rest of them we didn't have in Springfield, Ohio. I told them about the Second World War, and I told them everything about it. The nations, which nations, and, and that one and the other would go to war. Then, oh, excuse me, when the war and all would be tr terminated, the nations involved and in everything. Am I lying, Dr. Gross? No. Well, when that was broke out, now I'm in Cincinnati now, sitting up in Cincinnati in my office, working for Wright Aeronautics Corporation. And there came an announcement on the public address system. Shut the whole shop down. Nobody did work, just sat down. There would be an announcement from the White House on the public address system. Truman would be announcing the end of the hostility and the document was signed at sea. They shut the whole shop down. Everybody sat down. They didn't have to be hiding from the boss. They just sat down. And there was a fella that belonged to the school. He's sitting right back there too. He sat around, wait for a while. Nothing came on the PA, public address. Here he comes up to me in my office. Remember, he was a student of the school now. He says, well, Doc, is this the day that the war would be over? I said, no, they just might as well go on back to work. It just won't be today. Is that, is that so? I said, yes, that's so. Now, he didn't try to dispute and argue with me. Dr. Allen, would you mind standing up? Am I lying? No, you're not. That's the man I'm talking about, see. It wasn't over. Now you can go get your history books and look and see. Now I had told you, remember, I had told Dr. Grossi way before it happened that there was going to be war, be a war, when it was going to break out, who was going to be involved and so forth and so on. Talking about the attack on Pearl Harbor, said no, Chinese, Japanese wouldn't jump on Peking. Now, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. The thing that I tell you, don't you let nobody else come along and tell you something different. See, I've had 44 years going on, 45 years experience with this. You see, I know what I'm talking about. I'm able and capable to prove it. There hasn't a major event happened in the world that I didn't tell this school about it before it happened. That's the reason why I say, I don't have to prove my ministry. I don't have to worry about it, see what I mean? I don't go, I don't go home and sweat and you know, carry on about it, see. I go home and go to bed and go to sleep, see. Got one more I want to tell you about, then I move. The reason why I want to tell you about that is because in conjunction with what the man said this morning, I'm talking about Dr. Wilbur Trainer. He said, these charts reveal the purpose of Yahweh when you understand them. You wouldn't be jumping up trying to revenge or disprove, see, which Hmm. Did I say that right? These charts reveal the purpose of Yahweh when you understand them. And you wouldn't be jumping up trying to revenge or disprove, see. Trying to be, okay. Trying to disprove, see, which he said. I didn't say it. He said it. He said that he had tried that. Did you hear him say that? Yes. I wasn't asleep then. <laughs> now here he is. He's done come back to school, see. 
lot of these things that I taught you folks through the years, he knew nothing about, see. Now the man's back in school and I said to him, now since you're back, see, a lot of these things you don't know nothing about, such as people being healed. The things that I did and what you call prophecy and prediction is being fulfilled and taught in this school. I said, now I'm going to tell you one that's going to be just for you to Dr. Trainer. I'm talking about, now Dr. Trainer, if I'm lying, I appreciate it very much if you get up and tell me to my face right in school that I'm lying. And if I'm lying, I want you to do that. So now here we were. We were over in Athens, Greece, and the Greek Orthodox Church had to go to the head, see. There was nothing in Greece. The head of the Greek Orthodox Church was not in Greece, see. He was in Const Constantinople. Const Thank you. Mm -hmm. Or Istanbul. Now, I didn't know that David was with him, Dr. Trainer, little David that went overseas. And it would be nice to mention some things about that school over there, too. After that boy has gone over there, uh, David was with him. I told Dr. Trainer, now this one is going to be just for you. And if what I tell you don't happen, then my advice to you is for you to get back out of this school as quick as you can and drag everybody out that you can get out. I said, now there will be, this is for you. Since I had predicted a lot of them, see, about many things which many of the people who's been in this school for a long time knew about, I said, now there's going to be an earthquake in Istanbul within 48 hours. It will be in there within 48 hours. Now, if it don't happen like that, then you get out of this school. There he is sitting right there. I said, now this is, now this one's just for you. I didn't know little David was listening to. So within 24 hours, there was an earthquake in Istanbul. And every one of you had the privilege of reading it in the newspaper. I said nothing about it to the school. The fact of it, I was confined to bed when I told him about it. Am I lying, Dr. Trainer? No, you're not lying. Did it happen? Did it? It happened. Now, the reason why I brought all that up, see, I know what I'm talking about, whether you understand it or not. Right. On these charts, see, you understand. Now, if Yahweh had not shown me, all right, let's say it's, it, let's say it this way. If he didn't exist and hadn't shown me, I wouldn't have known no more about it than anybody else. I don't have nothing to boast and brag about on my own. I told you I never went to school. And incidentally, I noticed that Yahshua the Messiah didn't go. They say they lied on him. They say he went to school, had record in the archives, but he didn't. That's a lie. Now read, Dr. Harris, I'm talking about such time as now present. Third chapter of 2 Timothy. Third chapter of 2 Timothy. This know also. Now while you know so much about everything else, know this too. That in the last days. That in the last days. Perilous times shall come. Now listen, does anybody have to tell you about that? No. All the million different churches that you find around, 
see all the unemployment that you find around, you understand, all the hypocrisy, murders, and everything, you understand, it presents a perilous time. It presents a perilous time. Is that right? Right. All right. Now, Paul is telling Timothy way back there about, see, now you know this, a perilous time is going to come. How did he know that that was going to be a perilous time? How would he know? Now, here's how he would know, see. See, I got it. I got it up here. I can tell you something, too. Was because back here, before the flood, a perilous time happened, see. A dangerous time happened. Old man standing out there preaching 120 years, you see. And if you think it was only eight people back there, you're miss, you're sadly mistaken because he preached unto the four corners of the earth, the then populated earth, you understand. And then there was a whole lot of people with him, went along with him. But when it got right down, when he got right down to the day of parting, See, he didn't have nobody but him and his family. You follow? Now then that's, listen, just listen at this time. Now is repetition. I ain't going to have nobody but me and my family. That's all. See? All right. Read, Doc. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Now, men shall be lovers of their own self. You know, I like to tell you something in a way that you wouldn't forget it. See, uh, up here, but you might take it the wrong way. I just won't tell you in that way. I'll tell you this way, and you believe me when I tell you. I don't care what you think of yourself, how important you may think that you are your opinion, your own self, see. It makes no difference about how much money you got. Don't make no difference at all. The world don't care a thing about you. Now, the reason why I said that to you is to keep you from coming up here on this floor and making an ass out of yourself. They don't care nothing about you. They didn't care nothing about the Messiah. They didn't believe him. They didn't believe Noah, see? Now, why could you get some kind of thought in your mind and get up on the floor and think somebody is going to be carried away with you, understand? And all of them that would be tempted to be carried away with you, they will fall. Why? Because there's nothing to stand on. They themselves... As Yahweh said, as I live, saith Yahweh to me, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Yahshua to the satisfaction or to the glory of Yahweh. You're going to have to do it, see. Now, it ain't going to do you no good at all getting up here saying things about this, these charts. It ain't going to do no good. Okay, Deborah. Now, let me give you one. It was stated, as we've already said, you have to move off of blood, water, and spirit. Now, we have read that what spirit was, and that ought not to be anybody in this book, excuse me, anybody in this book, in this, in this class, or out, out in the street, for that matter, that have just, just a fraction of a sense to see if you come up off, it was Yahweh. <clears throat> it and Yahweh is spirit and he's the sum total of everything. And if you're gonna come up off of that, you have nothing to stand on. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the tabernacle. This is him transfigured, the tabernacle, these vessels that are set in there, they haven't changed. You can't take this 
and put it over here and this over there. You've got to set, you've got to set where he told you, as Dr. Trainum told you this morning. Even those that constructed this tabernacle, even though Datham, Horam, and Korah, Datham, I, uh, Ibram, Datham, Korah, they disagreed with him because they were master builders. And Moses just, they weren't up there in that cloud with him. They didn't see it. Moses drew a line, said, now, who's on Yahweh's side? Get over here. Who's on their side? Get over there. And the earth just opened up, up and swallowed them up. That's all them that were contrary. Now, that's all of you. That's all you're going to get out of this. Now, I want you to know this. This is not my work. I have never had sense enough to do nothing like this. And it is a little, it is just a little late now. I'm old and what the folks call senile. Don't have good sense. If I didn't have it back there in my youth, I wouldn't have it now. And I'll say something else about that too. This might help some. Now, people just get old, and they do get senile. Now, I'm 80 years old, subject to senility. Well, look, I can't get this out of my head. I can't get it out there. It is, excuse me, it's in there to stay. But now, listen, the folks that I'm trying to teach it to. They can get old and senile and slip up, but I can't. That's right. I can't do that. I straight, just like it was. I'm giving it to you straight. And for 44 years, call you back for 44. For years, things that I have been telling you about many times have been fulfilled. This school has been blessed, whether you appreciate it or not. Sometimes, no, excuse me, some things are hard to say. It is hard for me to stand up here and tell you, just like Yahshua the Messiah went through those three and a half years until he got right down to the end of it. And after he got down to the end of it, which he hadn't done before, in the 23rd chapter of Matthew, he said, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You won't go in yourselves and you won't permit anybody else to enter in. And he went on to tell them about devouring widows' houses. Is that right? That's right. And for pretense, making good long prayers and all that kind of thing. And their hypocrisy. And then he finally said something. Now, how can you escape the damnation of hell? There's no escape. So now, you all sick of me now? No. no. <laughs> Finish reading there, Doc. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. <clears throat> now, I'm telling you, don't nobody care nothing about you. They don't give a tinker's damn about you. So ain't no need of you getting all stuck up in yourself and getting up here and trying to be against Yahweh. 
They don't care that much about Yahshua the Messiah. They hung him out there on a tree. But listen, folks, now this, now get this straight. Don't forget this. These things must come. And if they didn't not come, then this school would not be right. It's just got to be this way. The wheat and the tares have got to grow up together. Got to get right down to the end before things will be exposed. Now then, don't forget now, Solomon put it like this. Rejoice, O young men, and walk after the imagination of your hearts. But while you're doing that, don't forget, for all these things Yahweh will bring you unto the judgment. Now proceed. Covetous. Covetedness. Boasters. Boasters. Now wait. Wait just a minute. Now you got the word covet. Covetous. Covetous. That means that the desire to have something that belongs to the other fellow. Mm -hmm. That's not your own. Therefore, the law says, thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet what? Thy neighbor's wife or his ox or his ass or anything else that belongs to him. Now here, you've got it over here. The apostle Paul said, covetous, covetous, covet what? The best thing, desire. He didn't say thou shalt not covet anything. How about that? Read on, Dr. Harris. Boasters. Boasters. Now, somebody wants to boast that they know more than this than I do. No, more about this than I do. You can't do that. All you're doing is just, just simple-minded somebody. They may follow you on off somewhere, but when it all, but when it's all said and done, you're going to have to do it either sooner or later. You're going to have to get right back up in front of this class or in front of Yahshua, the throne of Yahshua and bow your knees and confess. So you, you're not getting away with nothing. I want you to realize that, all right? Proud, they're covetous, they're proud, they're boastful. Now I'm boastful, I'm boast, I boast in Yahweh and he backs me up. And don't you jump on that thing cause if you do, I'll get you. And listen here, folks, I am not going to do it. I just might as well tell you about it now. I ain't going to sit around here and see the devil come up in here and drag off somebody. I ain't going to do nothing like that. So now you be very careful about what you say. Now, if you want to pull it, pull out. If you want to go somewhere, cut out. But you let the rest of them sheep alone. And when you think you're gone, you haven't. Because it caught up with you just as sure as shooting. Ain't that right, Dr. Trainer? That's right. Now, he said that right. Now, let me tell you something about myself. In 1936, I went off and went to Cincinnati. Said, well, I won't have to be bothered with that no more. Dr. Gross and a bunch of them in those days in Springfield, they went on home and sat down. Then the preachers went out of the churches 
which they attended and the church of God there. They said, now we'll get him back. Now, before I went to Cincinnati, this is what, you have to move the screen. Too busy muting me. The screen hasn't moved. But it before says, I, I won't have to be bothered with that no more. Dr. Gross said a bunch of them in those days. You can't see that? I've already read that. All but right. sorry. It's okay. But before I went to Cincinnati, this is what I told him. I said, every last one of you, you understand. Who understand what, what I'm talking about? You'll die just like I, I leave you. If you never see my face again in the flesh, I said, them that understand now. And that's just exactly what happened. Every one of them that's ever been in this school and understood what I've said have passed away, passed and gone. You know what I mean by past, don't you? They died, right? right that way. And every last one of you that understands what I'm talking about, you'll die just that way. If you are not living with Yahshua the Messiah is revealed from heaven, there's nothing else for you to go now. Blasphemers. Blasphemers. Now for you to get up and speak against this and think that it's my work that's open blasphemy. You may think you're hurting me. You ain't hurting me. I see that it's impossible for you to understand. That's the way I see it. Unless Yahweh reveals it unto you, you can't understand everybody's been sitting under the sound of my voice, had the privilege this morning. If not this morning, you've had it, you've had, you have in your lifetime of seeing the sun rise, seeing it ascend or reach its zenith in the sky, seeing it down on, down or set, everybody, in this building, everybody breathing, breathe and live. You read the story about his disciples, come and steal him away. He was the son of Yahweh. You never, now you know today, you know today by the sunrise, Yahweh put the things out there, the invisible things, put visible things out there for you to understand the invisible things. Now, when you read down there, his disciples came and stole him away. He was the son. You know, that's got to be a lie. Why? Because can't nobody come and steal the son away that's out here. Even though you weren't back there. Somebody will say, well, how do you know? Well, you understand? You understand how I put the things together? That's the reason why it works like that. Somebody will say, oh, you ain't right. Say, the earth moves around the sun. Yes, it sh sure did. When he was in that tomb, there was an earthquake and it moved around the sun. Yes. yes, sir, I tell you, this is something that you can't do nothing, nothing with. Now, let, let me say this. Let me say this. Now, as you, now, as it was said, Dr. Harris also said it, Yahweh said, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak according, not according to this word, 
it's because there's no light in them. Now, if you ought to, excuse me, now you ought to be wise enough not to get up and speak against it because you're telling on yourself. You're telling to everybody that knows something about it. You're telling on yourself. Now, somebody says, well, why go to the law and why go to the prophecy? Now, that's what Yahweh said. I didn't say it. And when you go to the law and to the prophecy, now, you follow me? Now, pay attention to what I'm saying. Just like he told Moses to build this tabernacle, to put the blood, water, spirit, and this whole thing is line upon line, precept upon precept, line upon line, all the way through. Seven steps in here, in this tabernacle. Now I'm going to try to prove this by you and me. I'll tell you something. Ever since you have been knowing me, since somebody said, you got to get up off of water, blood, water, and spirit. Ever since you have been knowing me for the most part, I told you that water baptism was invalid in this present age. Haven't I told you that? Yes, yes sir. sir. Haven't I told you? You might read that too in the ninth chapter of Hebrews. The water is out. The blood of bulls, goats, and heifers is out. It never has been in, in order to be out. Now, do you understand? But what this pointed to was the blood of Yahshua the Messiah. That is an out. And that water that ran out of his side or out of his sanctuary, that was the sacrificial lamb of Yahweh. That's not out. You may be, excuse me, but that isn't, and it's not going to be out. It reaches all the way back to Adam and through all generations. Now, if you would take it by the pattern, you got your blood, your water, and you have the spirit there and the door or the concrete. Now, mm. I didn't say nothing about them things. Yahweh said it. I told you, I don't know how many times and all of you have seen me debate it that physical water baptism wouldn't do you no good, okay? Somewhere. No, wouldn't do you no good whatsoever. It would not wash away sin. And you have read in the book have you got it there? That the blood of bulls is the ninth chapter of Hebrews. I think it is. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and heifers and ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Yahshua, who through the eternal spirit? Not just a minute. Now, it wasn't just a man, as a lot of you think of him, just a man hanging out there on the cross. It wasn't that. You know, it wasn't like that. No. Mm. It was through the eternal spirit that he offered himself to Yahweh without spot. And Yahweh had to accept that cause the eternal spirit that was in, incarnated in him, that was Yahweh himself. How much more is he sanctified to the purifying of the flesh? But he didn't raise up at that time. Never done nothing for you back there, then and up here now. 
What it did do was just simply point to him as being the sacrifice that Yahweh prepared. Listen, folks. Now that makes me say this to you. That makes me say this. Then people over there that follows Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad, he never died for nobody. And if he had if he had it, excuse me, and if he had, it was not acceptable. It wouldn't be the same as Moses had died. It would, it would be the same as Moses had died. It wouldn't be of any effect. John the Baptist was born with the Holy Spirit, and he didn't die. It never happened. It never helped you a bit. That's the reason why I don't Excuse believe. Me. It you. says it wouldn't have been of any effect. John the Baptist was born with the Holy Spirit and he did die. It never helped you a bit. That's the, re that's the reason why I don't believe in running around arguing about Muhammad, the honorable Elijah Muhammad or Elijah back yonder or Moses, or none of the rest of them. Yahweh had only one sacrifice and all the rest of them sacrifices and burnt offerings. Thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will, O Yahweh. Listen now. He taketh away the first. What that's for. That he might establish the second. Dr. Harris, would you mind reading that? Now look here, folks. You can just read these things over and over and over again. Just over until you get. So you can't repeat them. You can repeat them by memory, or still miss the boat. All right, read. read. Hebrews 10, 5. Hebrews 10 and 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire mine ears. Do you see that? Now, do you see that? They were offering up bullocks. Now, Yahweh said so. That wasn't his. That wasn't his desire. Teach you a reason sacrifices. Teach you a reason sacrifices and bull offerings that wouldest thou wouldest not. Listen, folks. But a body in which was flesh and blood. And I'll say that to say this, Yahweh has never been crucified, has never hung on no tree, never will hang on no tree. And Yahweh is not flesh and blood. Yahweh is spirit. Did you understand that? Sacrifices and burnt offerings from Cain and Abel on down through all this. Now listen, now look, folks, I have taught you this. Now for you to get up and say that it's out as if that I had taught you that it was in. I ain't never taught you nothing like that. Anybody that thinks I have, stand up. I'd like to see you. Now for you to get up to you to now for you to get here in front of my friends and say water baptism or the blood and water is out, the spirit is out, you're inferring that I have been teaching you that it was in. And I never taught anybody nothing like that in my life. For I'd rather suffer chastisement that's not to tell you 
the truth. I have chastised a lot of folks. Now you're really not tell, talking to me. You don't go up making light of Yahweh's testimony. Now, another thing, you stated that the kingdom of Yahweh or that the kingdom of God, as some say, is not being taught at 104-025. Well, we're, we're, it really should be 1040. Yeah, 1040. Now, that's a lot. It is being taught at 1040. That's all that's ever been taught. Now, when you say it isn't, then you're inferring that all, all I've been teaching you is full of lies. Well, then, you want to know the reality of it? I never taught you nothing. I'm not capable of teaching you anything. I'm not qualified to teach you anything. And neither is none of you. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. And I mean, do mean, he's the same teacher that's taught all the way through. 1040 South Grand Avenue, Los Angeles, California, was the location of the branch school. Now, I have something else I want to say to you. If the true kingdom of Yahweh has not been taught at 1040, or in this school where, where then you are a fool to have put some money in the first peace mission. And that means you're a bigger fool to put some in the second and still bigger fool to put some in the third. Now I'm here to tell you, and you don't never, if you don't never hear me talking no more, lot about no money uh, talking no more no whole lot about no money i'm here to tell you 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 are the prophets you are the people that's responsible for carrying what yahweh has revealed to you to the world out here the rest of it is not acceptable Somebody will jump up and say, you think you're the only one that has the truth? They said the same thing to Yahshua the Messiah. And he was the only son of Yahweh that was manifested in the flesh. You got to watch against all these things. Now, I'm saying what I'm saying here to belittle anybody. Yahweh forbid that I do that. We need every last He said, no, I'm not, I'm not saying, saying what I'm saying here to belittle any, you, you left out the not. I'm not saying to belittle anybody. Excuse me. I'm not saying what I'm saying here to belittle anybody. Yahweh forbid that, that I do that. We need Every last one of you, I've already tried to persuade you to ask and to try to get someone else to come and to listen to this vision. And we refuse, we absolutely refuse. You be the judge. We'll let you for the first time and the second time get up on the floor and speak contrary against this work. We'll let you, we'll suffer that in order that you might see that what Paul said there in the last days, even among yourselves, excuse me, even among your own selves, so you can see for yourself, you'll suffer that and you'll put, and we'll put you right up on the floor. We'll put you right back up on the floor. And you'll have to apologize for it if you don't see fit to apologize for it. You'll have, <clears throat> you want to be stubborn and hot-headed about it? 
you'll go to the lake. Yeah. Now I said that so you can understand it. Because if you don't, and as Dr. Trainum said this yeah. morning, you won't. You can go right down there to the library. Search all you please. You won't find nothing like up like this here. Now, I guess you've had to just about enough of me. No, no. Now, I guess you, said, you to... won't. Yeah, yeah. He said you won't find nothing lined up like this here. Okay, now, I guess you've just about had enough of me. No, no. But read where you were reading, Dr. Harris. Now, I'm showing you. Now, after all of these sacrifices, after all, from Cain and Abel on down, all the sacrifices and offerings, Yahweh created creatures. His, no, for, no, his, of course. And he requested this as a or uh, in other words, he ordered it. They were a substitute. Now, Billy Carroll sent me a paper, a statement, an advertisement slip, piece of paper, and it was Yahweh, an advertisement in the paper. And it says that Yahweh was a substitution for God. That's wrong. That's just exactly backwards. And it's not a substitute for God. It's a substitute. It's, it's not a substitution for Lord. It's wrong. Now look, so you can see what I'm talking about. And out of all the human beings that has been on the face of the earth, that includes, that includes the prophets, those that did have the Holy Spirit, Every one of them wasn't any of them acceptable as qualified. Yahweh wouldn't accept the sacrifice from none of them. He prepared a sacrifice, a body, and he came in that body. Did you see that now? See then, and if I know anything, did you want to say something? I said, so then. So then, if I know anything that's going to make me see that none of the animal sacrifices that were offered up in that, in that sanctuary, not a human being on earth, nothing that's ever been in the world or out of the world would be acceptable unto him but his own son. Do you see that now? That's all. He won't accept anything else. So for you to go out here and call yourself following Elijah Muhammad, following Henry C. Kinley, we profess him too, following Freddie Allen and Bob Harris, Wilbur Trainum, or anybody else. Now, Paul did say this. Follow me as I follow Yahshua the Messiah. But now sacrifices and burnt offerings that thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Yahweh. He taketh away the first, I'll read it. Is that what's written in that book? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now look over there. 550 million Roman Catholics. Look at Jehovah's Witnesses. Look at the Church of God all over the world. Now it says, he takes away the first, all of the natural, every bit of it. Now, here's the Pope over there. Meddling. Over there, meddling with that which <clears throat> was under the first covenant, Passover suppers. I 
through the bell, water baptism, all of the natural, everything. He takes away that he might establish the first that you. Now listen, folk, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Jews. Seven years later on the Gentiles, Hebrews, that you might walk in the spirit. Excuse me, five minutes. Done none of these things as a service unto Yahweh, because he's taken away the first, he's taken them away. And if you're and if you're going to continue to do them, you don't believe the scripture. You don't believe the prophets of God. You think it's going to continue on? He said he come in to fulfill it, to take it out of the way, that he might establish the first. And then that promise, I'll say this, and I'll sit down. That promise that was made to Abraham, that in his seed, he would multiply his seed as the sands of the sea, as the stars of heaven. Now listen, folks, listen close so you can take this home and study it. Now, if he's going to multiply his seed as the sands of the sea and as the stars of heaven, now then the Jews, now think that they are the sand, the seed of Israel. Now, did you want to stop here or continue? We got three minutes. We can finish it. We have to end. There is not 15 million blood Jews in the world. Now, would you call that a multiplication of the sands of the sea or and the stars of heaven? No, no sir. Somebody. Something's wrong. Something wrong somewhere. See that now? You can't say Yahweh made this the mistake. But listen here. The whole family of heaven and earth is called by the same name. Yahweh makes no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. He never has had anywhere respect for Any the Any more respect for the Jew. Continue. He's never has had any more respect for the Jews than he has for the Gentiles. Never. He said, I repeat, Yahweh hasn't had any more respect for the Jews than for the Gentiles. All of them are called by the same name. All are the son of Yahweh. He makes no difference between them. Now listen, folks, all that you can see. Now don't just jump up here and say that the heaven, heavens and earth have already passed away. Don't jump up and say that, because that's not so. Yahweh did declare the end from the beginning, and with him it's and with him it's him running his course. You understand? But with you it's not. Is that right? So don't you try to jump off out there into the ethereal space, you understand, and try to take something that you can't see can't touch, can't taste, can't understand, and try to fool some. The uh, people who see nothing of it understand. That's why Yahweh made everything as it is. That's, listen, see, you have a mortal or a physical body and eternal spirit if you are right dwelling in a mortal body. Now, What's coming up next is he's going to transform this body into an immortal body. You do not have an immortal body now. The scriptures read this. Look, he only has immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach. He is the forerunner and he ended it all in the same age. Yahweh gave him that acceptable body. Is that right? Now your body is a vial for which be the Holy Spirit. A veil. Is that a veil or vial? It's now a vial. Your body, your a... body is a vial for which be the Holy veil. Spirit. Your body. That's veil. Excuse me, veil. Now your body is a veil 
for which be the Holy Spirit. You follow what I mean? So you can't make any exceptions. Don't forget, folks. Don't forget. I want you to see this place filled up. See, I want to see it filled up all the time. Run us out of this building if possibly can. No sense in us going overseas preaching to somebody over there when we have people to preach to here. You follow what I mean? If you believe the truth, then I hope and trust that you've gotten something out of what I said tonight. I hope it has been it has been benefited you. The Holy Spirit prompt me to tell you as the end approaches in your life that this peace mission that they're all getting ready to begin then ready to begin then the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world before the end comes. Yahweh help us all understand that the gospel of the kingdom be preached in all the world. And as Yahshua the Messiah say, peace. Jehovah Witness and Roman Catholic, if they had preached it in all the world, the end would have already come. But they haven't preached. Somebody haven't preached. Is that right? Okay. I hope you got something out of it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And it's 101. Hallelujah. Beautiful. And you still have time, Lizzie. Hallelujah. We thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 p.m. I'm sorry, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia and 4 p.m to 6 p.m. in England. Our Jamaica class is Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology, which is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say together, hallelujah. 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 Hopefully yes, everyone is, will have a blessed day. Peace and love. This is hallelujah. Grace, and I would like to know hallelujah. what's the name of the transcript. Hello? Last lecture and importance coming to school and being obedient. Okay, thank you. Sure. December 21st, 1975. Thank you. Sure. Everybody have a great day.